first off, who am I? My name is Ethan Lewis. I'm a chartered building surveyor, um, and I uh, am co-director of an organization called Iala Impact. Uh, we're a not-for-profit architecture and building surveying consultancy based here in Edinburgh. And my co-director, Joanne McClelland, is a conservation architect. We've been going for about 18 months. Um, what is the the collective? It's it's sort of Sunday name. Um, is the Edinburgh Building Retrofit and Improvement Collective. Um, sometimes it goes by the portmanteau acronym of Edinburgh. And so that's our URL there, edinburgh.scot. And that, that long, complicated name uh, is important, and I'll come on to that in a minute. Um, so what is what is uh, Edinburgh and the, the collective? It's a platform. Uh, it's a group of existing organizations. So unlike unlike Loco, um, they looked at their environment in Glasgow and and set up a new organization. Um, we you know we we looked at the Edinburgh situation and it was it was a bit different. Uh, we worked with the Edinburgh Community Climate Action Forum, which came out of Transition Edinburgh and Evoc. Um, so they're existing organizations in the city, and and Edinburgh Edinburgh really came out of came out of that initiative. Uh, and we were connected with some fantastic existing organizations who are now, you know, we're very, very grateful to say uh, are members of, of the collective. So we've got, we've got uh, the Dudley's community, which is based in the north of the city, Porty Community NG, based in the east, and Banzai, which is Brunsfield, um, based uh, sort of centrally and slightly southerly. Um, so there are sort of communities of location. And then we have communities of interest. So uh, the Edinburgh Architectural Association, and obviously, you know, we're architects and surveyors. So we um uh we have connections there. Joe is the past president. Evoc Edinburgh Voluntary Organisations Council, the Edinburgh Tool Library, fantastic organisation, and their spin-off organisation, the the Retrofixers. So that's our members. The purpose um we wanted to be we wanted to form a joint voice. You know we all we all make a bigger impact when we're speaking together. Um we wanted to signpost to existing resources, and again I'll, I'll come on to that. It's quite important. We wanted to share resources and experiences. So we wanted to, uh, yeah, we wanted to give a, a place for these organisations to come come together. So at the moment, I'm the interim chair. Uh, Joe is the interim treasurer, and uh, uh, our friend and colleague Mick Patrick is our, our secretary. We're a constituted organisation, not incorporated. We've got a decision to make about whether this stays at that level, or whether it becomes, as Tom was saying, a, a cooperative, or whether really we're just a place for people to come together, and then they become the cooperatives and the delivery vehicles and the the. Uh, the incorporated entities. So I'm just going to have a look at this slide. So as as architects and surveyors, we sort of we we came to this whole retrofit conversation, and um, and we observed that essentially currently there are no good outcomes in this whole retrofit debate. Like good retrofit and actually good work with buildings just isn't really happening. We find that um, retrofit to be sort of quite a reductive word and, and concept in a lot of ways because actually you know you look at maintenance you know you look at accessibility um you look at um you know you look at 20 minute neighborhoods there is so many green space management energy independence all of these things are all really interconnected things and so thinking about retrofit and energy on its own uh, we found very challenging so and we actually identified that some of the hurdles as to why good retrofit isn't happening is actually because people are looking too narrowly at the whole issue so things like unfortunately what the energy saving trust provides to home energy scotland we find you know a lot of our time we find ourselves coming in on the back of on the back of those exercises it's just you know it's got to the report stage and the loan doesn't fit the terms and conditions don't fit the advice doesn't fit the building the scenario the community we're also finding that the benefits of the traditional construction industry um aren't being applied to this this area you know there are checks and balances there's there's um, risk management there's professionalism there's there's technical ability which just does not appear in the retrofit area and we just don't you know we couldn't figure this out we're, we're seeing all these mistakes and errors happening in this territory we're thinking we've got all these answers in the traditional construction sector but there's many things about retrofit which means they they aren't aren't being applied there's no consumer protection often in a lot of this sort of the, the 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 retrofit which is out there at the moment so we want to do something about that there's no community wealth building you know when you're doing when you're doing funding house by house picket fence by picket fence how does that encourage people to go out and speak to their neighbors how does it encourage them to build some sort of community community wealth and we're, we're missing holistic outcomes yes we're getting a better epc you know if you you know, if you do the cavity wall insulation or, you know, stick some PVs on your roof, but are you, are you really improving things in a holistic sustainability um, fashion? So our theory changed. So how do we, how do we deal with this? Well, the first thing is, is social infrastructure. So exactly as Tom 
talked about there. So this is this this inverted pyramid here is is how we think about it. So you know you start off at the bottom, uh, you know, an isolated individual in in their in their home environment, not really able to do much. You know, you can apply for you know a Home Energy Scotland loan or grant, and it might work for you, it might not. Um, even if it does work for you, you know, you'll get some technology. Um, you might get some good results from an energy efficiency perspective. You know, best case, but you know, that doesn't encourage you to to build a more sustainable community or, or, or you know, have a, a sort of more holistic, better life. Um, so if we move people up into things like um, stair associations or residence associations, they can do some sort of shared repairs work. Maybe they can all get their gutters cleaned at the same time, get their windows painted at the same time, get their windows cleaned together, and they can start to do maintenance work together or move on to the next step. And you've got a far more, you know, maybe they could become incorporated in some way, at which point they can do shared works together. So these things, they get over those hurdles of affordability, because if you're acting together, you can get um, efficiencies of scale. You can then start to get, you know, a consultant's fees on your own 20 to 30,000 pound retrofit project will seem off-putting. You won't want to get a consultant. You won't want to have any quality assurance because you can't afford it. It doesn't make any sense. But that same consultant might not be charging all that much more if you and all your neighbors who've got basically identical properties all come together, that consultant and that QA may be more possible. If you're together, you can access more effective, more flexible finance and funding uh, than if you're just acting on your own and all you've got is your mortgage or, like I say, the, the publicly accessible loans and grants through the government schemes. And then the real carrot at the end of this path is that, you know, if you're together and you're at scale, maybe you can go for district heating, shared energy schemes. But there are other other benefits here, like, you know, uh, the tool library is a great example of a sharing library where people come together and they co-own materials and, and products. Like, do we all have to have our own gazebo, you know, for the kid's birthday that happens once a year? Or can we have one gazebo and everyone shares it? You know, it's just a small, slightly silly example of of the efficiencies of having having a more holistic community based approach to this. Uh, it's worth noting as well, very different paths through this for owner occupiers, social tenants and um, private tenants, which we've got to acknowledge. So what we're looking to do is essentially, no matter where people come into this pyramid in this process from uh, in, you know, in Edinburgh, we want to provide toolkits to help them move on to the next one. So uh, Tom talks about community intermediaries. We're a big fan of that. It's an absolutely, it's the key cog in all of this is community intermediaries. Who's that, that really interested, active person in the community who brings people together, organizes the meetings, gets the bake, you know, gets the tray bakes, the, uh, gets the trestle tables. There's always that person. How can we support them? How can we inform them? How can we help them uh, provide a bring a network together of specialist support so they can really be much more impactful? Um, so we're looking to pull together these these toolkits. We're looking to signpost to community intermediaries, and we're looking to give people structure so that they can access this more effective, more efficient way of improving their their buildings. We did a survey. Uh, these are some of the, the findings of it. There was, um, you know, the ones in blue here uh, showing where people feel they're lacking knowledge. Um, so, uh, you know, knowledge and understanding quite a key thing, everything from the technical aspects of Windows through to understanding of listed building and planning up ap application um, sort of constraints around interacting with your buildings and, and technical things, legal things. Um, then we've got the, the barriers to working together. You see this big figure here, 55.8% um, dealing with the challenges of practical organization, non-cooperative aspects of working with others, as in like, okay, I see that community might be a way through this, but this is a massive challenge. The role of a leader and a handholder was quite um, it was quite well identified as in people saying, yeah, this would be great, but I need someone to help me through this. Who's going to really shoulder the burden of bringing people together? We all know what it's like trying to work with our with, with our neighbors so we took these um we took these findings and we we tailored our plan so this is this is what our collective is is trying to do really so we're gonna um we're looking to um host events now last year we did a series of retrofit roadshows where we went to existing community events and we we talked about retrofit and building improvement and this pathway through you no know, first collectivize first get together and then you can achieve more than just sitting within your picket fence but we also talked about bringing local professionals into it so uh, like Tom said, we want the res we want the uh, resources and the spend to stay in the local community. But a lot of local communities have an architect or a surveyor or an engineer who can provide that technical input. Why should they come from a different city or even a different part of town? What's better to keep someone honest than the fact they're going to bump into you at the school gates every morning? So we're very focused on making sure that we get local local professionals. Uh, one hundred one workshops, um, the ABCs of tenements, um, you know. Get yourself into an association, get a building survey, um, building pathology, how to work with windows, how to work with conservation areas, how to deal with risk. So we're, we're looking to put on um, these events uh, across Edinburgh with our communities. We're getting the website together. Um, so we are putting up there the results of the, uh, of the survey. 
uh, link trees to um, uh, to organizations. And then we put the theory of change model on there too, to show how all these bits and pieces of the ecosystem fit together. And we're pulling together some hero stories about what um, what other organizations have done well and how they've done it to inspire others and to share to share best practice. Yeah, these, these are some examples. So we did uh, the Heat Fair and Hot Cayley, which was great that Porty Community NG organized last year. Um, so we want to do more of those. We managed to warm a building without turning the heating on by everyone having a great shindig together. So then finally, just to wrap up, um, our focus is that the collective is not there to do the work. It's there to connect existing organizations to work more impactfully together. We've got a fantastic network, fantastic net. We think we've got the right theory of change. It's not easy. But to be frank, the existing thing is not currently working. So it's not like we're trying to say, oh, here's this thing that's working. We've got a different plan. Um, it isn't working because one by one retrofit, as Tom identified, doesn't work. The only answer is to collectivize. And so the first tools we want to implement is how do we help people to come together and work together? Um, if anyone on the call is from Edinburgh, you know, we're very keen on the, the locality uh, basis of this. You know, if you're in Glasgow, speak to Tom. If you're in Edinburgh, uh, please drop us a note. Um, the URL is on there. You can sign up to the mailing list. You can email us. You can click on the, the QR code there. Uh, and we'd be delighted to help new community groups form and support, uh, support them.